Hi guys, so last lesson of the week, it's lesson three, week number eight, okay? So um, no homework today, so we'll just go through today's homework and I'll show you a couple of, a few more bits um, and then we'll, um, we'll go again next week and trying to finish off patterns. Um, well, no, maybe I'll finish it off, but we'll get closer to finishing it off because there's a lot in this but mostly the same. We've kind of gotten to, to, to done the hard part of it now. If you get a, a um, plus m minus one times d and the first difference and linear and non-linear, then you're you're well on your way to understanding this. If you don't ask me, um, one or two asked, could I do an extra little class on some of this um, after school one of the days, um, an extra conference on Schoology, and that is a yes to that. Um, so we're gonna work on a day. If anyone else has an issue, you can ask me and um, you can join in on that. So it'll be a bit of extra maths if you need it. Okay, it's no problem. Right, so let's have a look, a quick look at this homework, right, from uh, from um, lesson two. So um, the first question there, question two, is a pattern is graphed in a diagram, right? So it looks like an L curve. Um, and what they want us to do, copy and complete the following table. Okay, so if we go and we look at this then, so here's term one. So term one is here, and the point is down here at minus one. So our ter first term value is going to be minus one. Our second term is up here. So here, here's term two, and it's up at three. So our second term is going to be three. Our third term is going to be up here at six. Let's go in a bit so you can see a bit better. Our fourth term is going to be there at, um, so our fourth term is going to be up here at eight. And our fifth term, there's no sixth term, so our fifth term is going to be here at nine. So we look at the, the first, the difference between minus one and three. So how do we get from minus one to three? I have to add four. To get from three to six, I have to add three. To get from six to eight, I have to add two. To get from eight to nine, I have to add one. So you know that the first difference there is not the same. Four is not the same as three, is not the same as two, is not the same as one. So this is going to be non linear it's going to be non-linear because the first difference is is not the same okay a little bit of that there oh, get rid of all this stuff now okay first difference is not the same Okay, let's move on then and take a look at the next one I gave you to do, which was question number four. Here it is here. Is there some more of it up here? No, just all down here in the bottom. Okay, question number four. Pattern is graphed. The curve has been included for clarity. Okay, so they've put the curve in for us. That's very nice. Does it represent linear or non-linear? Well, I can tell you straight away. It's not. That's not straight because it says, first off, they're telling us about a curve. So it's definitely not straight. But if I, um, if I want to work that out using maths, well, I think, okay, well, I have um, term one, term two, and term three. Here's term one, here's term two, and here's term three. So term one is at point three. Term two is at point six. And term three is at point 12. So if I look at the difference between them, that three, three to get to six, you add three. 6 to get to 12 though you have to add 6 so there's my first differences circle there for you so um does it represent a linear nonlinear well it's going to be nonlinear and because the first difference is not the same okay it's a bit of a lag there not coming in but I wrote there the first difference is not the same so it should be coming true for you now in a second go on just do it okay it's slowly coming in it's just loading there not the same all right question six then so six has a b c d and e fair enough question six a linear pattern is graph, right? They're telling us straight away it's going to be linear. A line has been included. Let's put the terms in. So term one, same again. Term one is here and it has no value, zero. It's right on the line. Term two is here and its value is going to be one. 
term term three is here and its value is going to be two so it's going to be two term four the value is going to be three term five the value across is going to be four and term six the value is up here it's going straight across from five okay so we've done part a i'll try and keep the whole thing in the picture if i can part b find the first difference so i'll do that on the i'll do that on the table the difference between here and here here and here here and here here and here and here and here difference is always one isn't it it's always plus one i'm going up in ones the whole time so the first difference is going to be one or plus one if you want the seventh difference right so if i was to add in if i was to add in so i have term one two three four five six term seven i'm going up in ones the whole time so it's obviously going to be six describe the pattern in your own words okay so the pattern in your own words always say where does it start starts at starts at zero and adds one every time okay and find the general term for this pattern so i'm going to do that up beside the question here so remember if we want to find the general term or the nth term is a plus n minus one times d our first term so a is going to be zero and d is the difference is going to be one so it's going to be zero plus n minus one times one multiply the one by the n and the one by the minus one so it's going to be zero plus one n or just n and minus one by plus one is minus one so our answer is going to be n minus one I'll put that down at the answer as well so that the general term is going to be n minus one okay that was question number four no that was question number six sorry the last question then i asked you to do was question number eight so eight here is down the bottom here the description of two linear patterns are given pattern one starts at two starts at two and adds two every time so if i'm to draw a pattern one, i'm going to separate this and i haven't even looked at the questions yet right but i'm going to separate this out to see what it looks like so the first pattern is going to be two adds two every time two four six eight ten and so on pattern two starts at ten and subtracts two every time so pattern two is going to be ten eight six four two and so on now i still haven't looked at the question but i've drawn me two patterns out okay so let's have a look and see can i I'll see can i squeeze it in in the one screen so you can see it no, i'm not going to be able to am i so copy the diagram shown so copy the diagram shown we did that plot the first five terms of pattern one on the diagram okay right so the first five terms of i'm just gonna to have to make this quite small so i can squeeze it into the page the first five terms of pattern one so you see i've drawn the two patterns first there so blue is going to be blue is your our first pattern and green is going to be our second pattern okay so let's stick with pattern number one then pattern number one our first term in pattern number one is going to be two so i'm going to draw my line and i'm going to start with pattern one in black okay so our, our first term is going to be two so there's our first oh, why is it doing that pattern number one is going to be two there's our first point drawn in going back to the blue highlighted down the bottom left our second term is going to be four our second term is going to be four our third term is going to be six looking nice and straight isn't it nice straight line our fourth term is going to be eight to across as far as four up as far as eight there it is there and our last term that's the plus five didn't it yep five is going to be ten so our fifth term is going to be ten so there we go there's our first um pattern drawn i'm going to go a different color pen for the second pattern same again 
This is part C. Plot the first five terms of pattern two. 10, 8, 6, 4, 2. So our first term is 10. Our second term is 8. Our third term is 6. Same spot as the black dot. Our fourth term is going to be 4. And our fifth term is going to be 2. So they're kind of like an X shape, isn't it? Okay, so there's our two patterns done. Identify the term number and term value of any point which is shared by the patterns. Well, there's only one, isn't there? Here it is here. Let's go a different color pen again. There is that spot there in the middle, isn't it? So we're looking for the term, they're looking for the term number and the term value. Okay, well, our term number is going to be three. That's where that that's where meet, where meets up with the box there. So it's going to be term three and value of that term is going to be six because that's what joins up so term three and the value of that term is going to be six okay and that's the homework correct there's a couple more examples you can have a go out there we have a go at question nine why not if you have a bit of time so i said some people are flying and looking for extra stuff well there's nine full questions there you've only done four of them so if you're finding that the homework is getting done very very quick well then you know practice 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 it won't do any harm okay on to have a look at a couple of bits so using graphs to solve different problems so where you see this in real life so if you have a table like this on the right hand side there that um, and this is basically and this is the kind of thing you might do in science for your CBA next year. Um, you're looking at plant growth over 10 days. So I'm looking at a plant growing over 10 days. Uh, at, at, at no days, the height of the plant is 8 centimetres. At 4 days, it's going to be 10 centimetres. At 10 days, it's going to be 13 centimetres. The plant has grown all the time. The height is getting bigger as the days go by. Using this value in the tables, draw a graph to show the height of the plant for the 10 days so you're going to um this here is going to be your x-axis and this here is going to be your y-axis and you're going to graph that so let's have a look what that looks like there's our graph there so they've put that table into a graph so they've used those they've used those results to make um so at zero days you had eight centimeters at two days you had nine centimeters at four days you had ten and so on and it gave you this nice straight line at the end what was the height of the plant after three days okay so that we only have three days because we have zero days and two days and four days when we have our graph drawn we can go to three days draw a line up to where it touches the graph and go into the height on the y-axis and it's somewhere there so at nine and a half days in between that's when it was so uh, it would be nine and a half centimeters after three days so somewhere between nine and ten after that find the slope of the line so you're looking for the slope of that line over here a slope like the slope of a hill and um, so the slope of the line now in this when we're calculating slope we're going to use this one here we call it the rise over the run so we're going to use this formula here every time the right oops sorry I'll jump back to the start for some reason Go back down here. So we are going to use this one here. The rise over the run. So the slope of the graph. So if we have a look at this one here. The rise. How far is it going up by every time? So it's going 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So the rise is always 1. So it's going to be 1 over how... How far does it go up every time it goes up? Every, every, every time we increase by one, it goes up by two. So it goes over. So the rise over the run, it's rising one. And the run, as in the run going from left to right, is going to be two. So one over two. There is another way of doing it. You have a read through this. If you, I know some people have said they don't like using A plus M minus one times D. They prefer just adding the difference on. That's the way you do that, but it still works out as rise over run, which is one. So every time you go, you go up by one, you go across by two. Okay, so you can see there, every so you have to go across by two, and up by one. 
If you're going from this point here to this point here, you go across by two and up by one. If you want to go from this point to this point, you go across by two and up by one. So it is the rise over the run. So one over two. So if I was to draw that as a triangle, there's my distance between those two points. There's my distance between those two points. So this is going to be one over two. This is going to be one over two. It's always one over two every time. Okay, we'll be doing more of um, those. What does the y-intercept represent in this pattern? So what does the y represent in this pattern? So if the line starts at a value of y is equal to eight, so that's our, our, our plant starts growing at, we're at eight centimeters. So the y represents the start value of the pattern. So y represents the start value of the pattern. This is the y here. So this is the y-intercept. So you see where the line hits the y-axis? That's your y-intercept there. And that represents where the plant, where we start measuring the height of the plant. Okay. Um, scribe the pattern. Starts at eight, always. It starts at eight centimeters and it increases by one every term. That's the way how we always describe the pattern. What would the height of the plant be after 25 days? So we're going at two days, four days, six days, eight days, and 10 days. So we're looking at part F. Uh, so if the plant grows half a centimeter every day, in 25 days, well, here's half a centimeter there. By 25 days, it's gonna be 12 and a half centimeters after that. And the plant was eight centimeters to start with. So it's going to grow the 12.5 centimeters plus the eight that it was already at the start. So the actual height of the plant is going to be 20.5 centimeters. And we do loads of these and we have a go at some of the questions. The last part then, how many days will it take for the plant to reach a height of 30 centimeters? Okay. So well, if I start at eight and um, it's going to go up as far as 30. So we take the, 30, the 8 away from the 30 to give us 22. The 22 centimetres is what it's going to grow between when it starts off and when it um, finishes at the end of the days. So the plant's going to grow 22 centimetres more than it had at the start. And we say, right, we have our 22. And it's grown half a centimetre every day, which means it's going to take 44 days to reach the height of 30 centimetres. Okay, last um, thing for today is looking at um, directly proportional graphs. Sounds complicated, it actually isn't. So if we look at graphs that are directly proportional. So two things, as one increases, the other increases the same factor. Again, sounds complicated, but it isn't. So if A costs a fiver and B costs four euros, if, there, if, the, if those two things are directly proportional, as this goes up to tenor, what's this going to go up to? Eight, isn't it? If this goes to 15 euro, this is going to go to 12. If this goes to 20 euro, this is going to go to 16. So they're going to go up by the same amount every time. So if you have a look at this graph here, um, your fiver is here. There's your fiver. And that goes up to a tenor. If you go back in the other direction, it halves. And part B then is two goes to four, keeps doubling every time. So this goes from two and a half to five to eight. This goes from two to four to eight, or for two, two and a half to five to 10, and two to four to eight. So it's doubling every time. That's what it means by directly proportional. Okay, quick example, and I will leave it at that. The table for converting euro into Australian dollars is shown, right? So this might happen, you go on your holidays and you wanna convert your money into a different currency. Using the values in the table, draw a graph to show the conversion from euro to dollars, right? So if t for two euros, you get $3. For four euros, you get $6. For six euros, you get $9. All right, so you can see there, the two is gonna to go to three, 
the four is going to go with the six and the six is going to go with the nine okay so you see there on the table two four and six there's your euros it's the first point is the first coordinate and three six and nine is your second coordinate so you can draw a graph um to um, work that out and it's the same as the last example how much would three euro be worth in dollars so we say oh we haven't got three euros here but from our graph we can go to three euros go up to the line and across and it will show us that three euros gives you about 450 about four euro fifty somewhere between four and five are the two currencies directly proportional and why? So are they two um, are, are, are directly proportional? Well, let's have a look. Two doubles to four. So two goes two, four, six, and this goes three, six, nine. Are they directly proportional? They are, aren't they? Okay. So we're doubling all the time. Okay. So, um, the last part is the is is to find the slope of the line, same as before. Rise over run. So to find the slope of the of the of the part um, rise over run. So if I look at that one in the question, I'm just gonna draw a little triangle in it for you. So if I go from this point to this point and this point to this point, this is gonna be my rise and this is gonna be my run. So I say, right, well, the rise is going to be, I'm going from 9 to 6. So the rise is going to be 3. And the run, I'm going from 6 to 4, is going to be 2. So my uh, my slope is 3 over 2. Okay. Okay. I'm going to stop there for now because I'm after throwing an awful lot of information to correct the homework and then introducing graphs. So there's an awful lot um, for you to be taken into um, into account there. So we leave the second um, example of that type until next week. And we're going to have to do a bit of live stuff next week, probably two, maybe even three lessons to go through this. And we'll start from there. Um, in the next class so what I want you to do guys for the rest of this lesson I just want you to get used to doing slopes and um, I'm, I'm working with graphs so I just want you to do exercise 32.3 and I want you to do questions one and questions two now it's not homework so just question one and question two there's no graphs drawing here and um, you just have to fill in the table and um, work out a couple of things using your graph one linear one and one um curve one curve so that's your homework that's your classwork so i'll just put it up at the top here lesson three classwork because you'll still have half an hour and it's going to be exercise 32.3 questions one and two now you should upload that there so you have your example there so because you will go through it the next day but it should be well doable within the times of the class and we'll look at some more examples and a bit more of the theory um, behind graphs and graphing and um, patterns next week okay right i'll talk to you later on bye, -bye.